he has a population of 140 crore okay yes uh, let's say a house is serving four to six family members okay some families are smaller some family larger let's say let's say let's say five okay at two and a half crore houses yeah. okay you end up serving just under 15 crore people to have a roof over their heads you know again for a lot of people watching this broadcast who are not in this phase of life you will not understand that for some people having yes. a cement roof concrete roof is their life goal because they have you know a tarpaulin roof they have a slate roof kacha pakka ghar okay it's a pakka promise now out of this 2 crore houses have been built now again assuming that not all of them are amazingly built and not all of them are being built by government we've just done ground report joyta in the past 2 weeks okay all over the all over the country we're actually seeing how these houses are being built mm-hmm. they're damn decent uh, gauri sadat can we put out some visuals of the pm awas yojana houses that we visited these are nice houses yeah okay places that you as a human being can live mm-hmm. with dignity with a kitchen with a bathroom uh with you know with the bedroom with the sitting room with a small balcony to dry your clothes with a park outside a proper road proper sewage proper electricity done in 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 a decent way and the people are getting something which is fundamentally important a house now like i said we are talking real estate sector one end okay but you talk about basics uh, at the other so let me let me let me get ankit back into this ankit the allocation for this has gone up by 66% correct so you are seeing clearly that there is a direction where the government is boosting rapidly starting new things and what is not been mentioned is continuing one and a half hours of budget speed doesn't cover the entire budget so there's a direction being put this is a scheme that they really want to complete in the next one year yes so i think uh, we're talking about 79000 crore 66% up and if we're talking about 789 crore 10 crore what are the number is just imagine the kind of people and the quality of life they will go up and this is a direct push from on all perspectives so look somebody is living in in a decent house their health care expenditure will go down so the government is pushing infra will go up cement requirement will go up everything will have a direct or indirect the kind of an employment it will generate just imagine okay okay so 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 the big push here ladies and gentlemen okay is the themology that i am taking away from this okay it's a it's a polite nod to the middle class okay it's not a red carpet it's a polite nod to the middle class thank you for your belief and your patience that's number 1 number 2 it is we are getting out of the way because the emphasis on the speech has been promotion of r&d promotion of capital expenditure which means infrastructure building and the reduction of compliances and the ease of doing business mm. this is government saying that i am going to do my job which is to provide you infrastructure and i'm going to start getting out of your way at greater pace with e courts and this all of that look at the themology all of that themology is saying i am getting out of the way and my job as government is now to take the wealth that is generated by team india and transfer that not in terms of socialism but as a welfare state to the antyodaya okay socialism means ek roti cut it down to various pieces we are now 20 rotis you guys make them we'll provide you the chula to make the rotis okay which is our government job and out of the 20 rotis that made let's make sure that the poor people can also eat food this is the way and that's the right way of going atul puri joining us uh, uh, this afternoon anshuman joshi also joining us on the broadcast gentlemen i'm just coming to you in a second okay so let me take on the other thing which is a fundamentally big thing with you with you ankit i can't explain to people watching this broadcast in real life to have seen this witness this with my own eyes Government of India announces, let's say, Avas Yojana scheme. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. what is the Avas Yojana scheme? The Avas Yojana scheme is not that government makes the house and you come and take the chabi. Avas Yojana scheme is, if you want to build the house, or you want to buy a house in a scheme that is being developed for low cost, okay, the government will provide you fifty thousand rupees if you want to build the house yourself when you start. Fifty thousand rupees when you put a pakka roof. And fifty thousand rupees when you complete the house. Let's say the house costing you three four lakh rupees. Government will provide you one and a half lakh in your account in three tranches. And the money has been coming. 
this is not sitting with some parcha in somebody's office hoping to find somebody's cousin who can get the funds cleared and have it transferred it is direct cash transfer it is a game changer in development economics ankit yes it is and just imagine this is one point like is actually actually asking if i look at it i, I was discussing with a uh, few of the uh, people who work with me my driver they, they they actually get this money and one and a half like is huge money for a small <laughs> village you can actually create a small house in one and a half lakh to two lakh rupees without a single commission paid it's un i can't think of it that to get get money get money pulled out like this okay and without having to you know i would say gift someone i can't use the word bribe can i gift someone i guess it's a big deal joyta um yeah single most revolutionary developmental step has been to create these damn bank accounts so that the people who are receiving the money receive the money not through seven middlemen from central government all the way down which is what rajiv calculated was out of 87 rupees gets lost <laughs> Uh, yes card. but risha but at the same time you know i have seen also myself you know people who have been living in i mean those are not houses those are hutments yeah. and from there to actually shift to a proper house you know inside one compound maybe there are three hutments and then there is this one room uh, with a fan with a light and then there is a toilet maybe sometimes there are two toilets over there i mean the sheer sense of dignity that brings in and you know and these people are they are so proud they will actually take you maybe Maybe this guy is just a flower seller sitting uh, next to the roadside with some, you know, selling flowers. And once you go and ask him, he will take you to his house and he will show it to you yeah. and say, "So this is what we have done." You know, our and reporters were on the ground; they're so excited us to show the houses. You know, come, come, you know, and come see the bathroom, come see the balcony. It's it's a it's a game changer. Yes, but at the same time, Risha, I'll tell you what is happening. at the ground level there is still scope of some corruption and it has happened in certain states i do not want to mention it you there, can there is a will it. there is a way yeah. <laughs> okay i'll mention it okay okay, okay. <laughs> i'm not mentioning it but you can it might be jaita's home state okay <laughs> yes okay. it is the thing is you see so the whole point is at some level there has to be some kind of check that goes into the process to see whether because ultimately what happens the village headman the sarpanch sometimes he gets uh, involved the i mean basically these are uh, rural areas there are yeah, urban okay areas. so let's not kid ourselves so, that hmm. yes but you know but so but, but you know but but we did a dipstick test okay a dipstick test is i can't now i have no way of checking what is it 2 crore houses there's no no way i only government can do that no private agency no deloitte no pws no nobody can check 2 crore houses only government can do that okay so either you trust government if you don't trust government and you want to check you can only do a dipstick test go to random places and see yes. so we've done a dipstick test and these people got their houses built okay uh, almost cent per cent wherever we went and they said yes we've got some people have got the first installment we've got the second installment and they're saying as soon as the roof is laid we go to the guy okay he comes and check roof is laid within a few days second installment comes when you complete the hall they give, give us the final installment and these are hindu families muslim families sikh families okay whom we've spoken to who got their houses yeah. okay so this is very interesting okay now so let me okay yeah, yeah finish your thought then i want to get mr yeah, priyan the thing is you see what we have been witnessing in prime minister modi's governance for ever since 2014 the move away from identity politics to development politics so so minute you are talking about religious identity caste identity wo aayega joyta uska bhi time aayega okay i mean we are we are at that oh, we are time going to people vote which is rightly said on emotions hmm. okay you'll take the house you'll take the ujwala you'll take the you'll take the toilet doesn't mean you'll vote vote for the person okay so people vote on emotions we have to accept that but, but their lives are becoming better started. which is what is fundamentally country is becoming better their lives are becoming better and that unleashes because the person who gets the pakka roof then he's thinking i want a scooter okay then he's got the scooter then he's thinking now i i want to i want to shop for better clothes the entire economy starts benefiting because aspirational values go up okay let me okay okay hang a second hang a second hang a second let me get mr joshi in. mr joshi on the specificity of something which is applicable to a lot of these schemes okay but has become the underlying root of them the ability to have the accounts in which you can do a direct cash transfer earlier ladies and gentlemen cash delivery of government scheme meant that you went to a particular office where a guy is sitting there's a long line or he's got a word of notes and he's sitting in his register you're coming you're doing an anguta chap and it's about up, up to him okay in a ration shop it was a monopoly and it was the ugliest monopoly 
if he felt like giving you food, didn't feel like giving you food, what could you do about it? You didn't have any other option because you only could go to that one Russian shop. So it's a game changer, direct cash transfer. Now, uh, I would like to tell you what has happened is with digitalization, things have become easier. And since you know that uh, the cooperative banks, especially the district and state cooperative banks and the primary agriculture credit societies have existence across the country, especially in the rural areas, even in the urban areas. So it has become easier for uh, the for almost everybody, even the poor people, to eventually go ahead and open accounts there, especially the PM Jandhan Yojana and all of that. Now, what has happened is this: that you know, Honourable uh, you know Cooperation Minister Amit Shah ji said that you know now the accounts uh, now they are going to make sure that basically computerization of the primary agriculture cooperative societies is going to eventually happen. So the packs are going to be computerized now. NABARD has taken out a tender for implementing the same. It does takes a little bit of time, but you have to know that there's there's a brighter future coming in. So yes, money is reaching everybody through the cooperatives now and will reach through the cooperatives. But also, the cooperatives are moving to, a, to something new now. It's, come, it's moving towards digitalization now. So okay, possibly... Okay. So you're, you're, you're focusing on the cooperatives. I wanted to just, just to yeah. mention that all of the monies that are sent by disbursed by central government don't go through the cooperatives. That's what the con concept of direct cash transfer is. Let me... Okay. Uh, I'm told uh, uh, Aditya Chamaria is joining us. I'm expecting uh, union ministers to start joining us from 3 o'clock onwards. We're also expecting Nirmala Sitaraman uh, to be uh, speaking out uh, and I'm expecting a press conference uh, to be coming uh, from the finance ministry and their team. Uh, but uh, let me get uh, Mr. Jain into this conference. Mr. Jain, just on a theme that when the government announces a scheme, okay, our biggest problem was not that the government did not try good schemes, was the implementation of them. Have we become better at implementing them? Sir? Mr. Jain, can you hear me, sir? Can you hear us? Mm -hmm. Mr. Jain, can you hear me? Okay, I'm assuming he can't. I'm going to come back to them. Joyta, has the government of India become better at, announcing these, uh, at implementing these schemes? Yes, definitely. And that this is something uh, visible. Okay. Huh. So when it comes to visible in terms of when you're talking about any schemes for that matter, uh, if you go and talk to people, I mean, processes have been kind of, I would say, simplified. Uh, I still do not know whether they have been able to cut off this uh, totally when it comes to implementing. No, but we, we, we think of total, totals will never happen, no. Totals, so you, I'm sure it doesn't happen in America also, but have we become better at it, okay? Uh, I was discussing in the morning, Joyta, that, you know, 10 years ago, if you and I were sitting on budget evening, we'd be discussing the price of onions. Uh, nobody's mentioned the price of onions once today, okay? Yeah. It's become irrelevant to the political economy of the country, which is a great thing. Yes. Okay. So, have the budget leaks become sort of irrelevant? Is it no longer the biggest issue? Nobody is talking about that only one rupee reaches the, the, the Antiyodhya. Uh, if you ask me, uh, look at it, you know, uh, Risha, we are not even talking that much about, say, for example, the tax rebates that have been given. We are looking, I mean, okay, we discussed a bit of it, but now we are talking, looking at the bigger picture. So, obviously, I mean, India also has moved ahead and, and I would say significantly in the last eight, nine years that Mr. Modi has been in power, in charge, he significantly, okay. I would say, shifted the narrative to, uh, uh, say, as you said, you know, on, from inflation towards actual development. Because okay. you see, and when you're looking at it, I would say the handling of the economy at a time when there have been supply chain disruptions, first due to COVID, then there is the Ukraine war, and there have been problems in terms of, say, fertilizer, oil, and all that. Okay, it yeah, has so, been okay. Tough so other than fertilizers, ladies and gentlemen, one thing which is, which is of course, notably absent from, from budgets of, of the recent times have been uh, oil subsidies. Uh, they are gone. Uh, not many changes are possible in the indirect tax regime other than duties, customs, because everything comes under the GST council which sits all year round, which is completely a separate exercise. So the, the, the budget and the impact it has, of course, uh, has, uh, has fundamentally uh, uh, changed. Uh, Atul Puri, uh, just get your thoughts on what has just happened and then I want to ask you some specific questions. Mr. Puri. Yeah, so basically with respect to the uh, common changes which have happened uh, are, 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 you know, more related to the uh, economics of, of the investments which the country is making. You know, it's basically the, uh, the, the robust investment, the robust um, uh, infrastructure. But that's the theory, Mr. Puri. Yeah. Okay, in practice, how is your life, which now when you go and advise people, how has their lives changed? 
So, see, I practice on the direct tax matter. So, basically, if, if I talk about the income tax side, there is not not much of change which has which the budget budget has introduced. It's uh, primarily the uh, the since we are more into the investment mode, so that is why it is basically the uh, collections which are being more focused by the government rather than on the uh, on okay. The so then, when you are having only very little practical relief in terms of application, in terms of implementation, in terms of compliance, in terms of all the other headaches when it comes to incorporating a tax that, let's face it, pays salaries for you guys, okay? Uh, has it become easier for people to operate from 1st of 1st of 1st of April? Yeah, so basically, uh, I will just uh, mention a couple of points. What is what is the ease uh, which has been uh, offered in this budget? So primarily, uh, what we used to have earlier was multiple tax forms which were there. So this is the one major change which has been introduced from this uh, next uh, for assessment year, where there will be one single unified form, and that form will be applicable for all across the line, all the uh, income tax assessees. So that's a very welcome move because the multiple forms were bringing in multiple confusions, and there were a lot of uh, defective returns which were being filed because of that reason. Okay, so government, one, yeah, sorry, finish your thought, yeah. finish your thought. One, one uh, major change which has been brought in for with respect to the uh, high net worth individuals was uh, with respect to the change in surcharge. This, uh, the highest surcharge which was applicable earlier was at 37% and this has been reduced to 25% which is actually a welcome move towards the income concentration in the hands of the high net worth individuals for for the purpose of more. What inco income concentration means that they are no longer keeping their money in Swiss accounts or leaving for <laughs> Dubai and Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem, it's a drain. Uh, yeah. There are honest people, everybody is not Malia, okay? So yeah. there are honest people yes. who are work, who earn a living and if you live in a capitalist economy, that work, at one end you do Elon Musk, wah wah, what a great man, okay, Jeff Bezos, okay, we, 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 we lean forward. But anybody in our own country makes money, oh no, 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 bad guy, crook, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so then what happened if you somebody's worked hard, generally not done any scam, generally worked hard, okay? done well, created wealth for themselves and for others and you're telling them I'm going to take away 50%, well, they're leaving for Dubai, <laughs> okay? They've already gone, most of them, mm. and you lose wealth, yeah. okay? And that's, that's a stupid idea, so this makes, this is a smart way. There's a reason that the British operate the Cayman Islands, no, even though they claim they don't, there's a reason they do it. Mm. Okay, Aditya Chamaria joining us on the broadcast. Mr. Chamaria, your, your quick takes and I have a couple of specific questions. Uh, as far as we are concerned, this is a good budget, and as the budget, uh, it, it's it's emphasis on the tourism and it's all emphasis on infrastructure. Both are very good for rope phase, and uh, we feel that uh, we feel once once the once the 50 uh, cities uh, destinations are identified by the by the. Uh, by the minister and and once uh, government identified that they will they, play a very important role in physical connectivity and the rope also will play a very important role in decongesting the cities yeah i'm assuming you're listening so to an echo of your own voice in your ear sir i apologize for that my pcr crew will show some competency and very rapidly uh, assist you with that situation but we can hear you just fine so please carry on sir So I feel it's. Uh, I can. Can I? Can I do, do it again? Huh. So this is live, sir. There's nothing to repeat. We are going live on TV, sir. Carry on. Oh. Okay. So uh, there's there's a lot of scope for decongesting the cities in in India. So where the ropeway will really play a very important role. So the 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 infra the, the infrastructure push uh, given to the uh, given by the government will play will go a, a wrong way in in in. in, in Okay, okay. What Mr. Chamaria there is alluding to, and let me just touch upon this fact, okay? Promotion of tourism in this country, both domestic and interactive and international. The problem is we hate ourselves so much, okay? Mm. So I promise you, there are a bunch of people here who will go to London and Venice and Paris for their holidays, and they'll happily spend whatever 20, 30,000 rupees a night for a hotel room, okay? But when a Ganga ferry starts off that charges the same amount, we'll say, oh my God! What is this loot mar that is going on? Okay, that money, imagine if a foreigner comes to India, that's $300 a night they're spending. It's not crazy money, $300 a night for them. Okay, all that money goes to us. Okay, so will there be luxury tour and travel? Yeah, otherwise, you know, then everybody should travel uh, chair, chair car. That doesn't happen, no. So come on, you know, there's complete nonsense going on. Joyata, identifying areas of tourist potential and interest through a competition model. Okay, that means cities and towns who actually want to be identified. 
okay and then they will get funds and other recruitments uh, for 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 promotion uh, these are you know, there are thematic approaches to things which are going on over here. Uh, yes, exactly. Rishabh, if I can put it in the context of what is going on in G20 for that matter. If you see, they have scheduled up, I think, around over 200 meetings which are going on. And where are they holding these meetings? These meetings are not being held in, for example, just in uh, New Delhi and Mumbai. You know, they are spreading out all over the country, right up to the northeast, in Kashmir, in Bengal, in Gujarat and the so-called less developed states states as well. I think you see to showcase the tourism potential of what India has and this is what we see when it comes to the, uh, this is a reflection of that you know. They are bringing in that same uh, principle, the same thematic approach in terms of explore India, find out places of uh, you know new areas say for example, we how much uh, attention is given to places like we say in Hampi in Karnataka. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, uh, when you look at the foreign tourists, they are only looking at maybe Taj Mahal and the uh, New Delhi, no, that no, circuit no, yes, and yes, that Jaipur only triangle. The, I, had, I had an American, fr American uh, British friend, mother, father came and the father is on the board of Deutsche <laughs> Bank. Okay? Uh, so, they said you travelled in Delhi, in, I live in Delhi in case you want, your parents want to go, let me know. So, the, they, went, they went to the 5 star hotel, the shopping was inside the 5 star hotel, uh, back to the airport, Taj, to the Taj, back to the airport, back to London. Okay? So, the thing is that you don't know anything else and if you do there are people who want to spend the money and you can and it's a ma major economic boost to this okay joyta uh, just 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 on just on, on on another thought when it comes to themology okay so the the finance minister has said that she's identified seven themologies for this budget okay right what are what are yours what what are you seeing that's coming I, i've given you mine what are yours uh, what I am seeing is you see the main areas while of course she's talked about inclusive development reaching the last minute uh, infra, uh, investment in infrastructure uh, this thing the whole idea is there are two ways of looking at it what you call antodvaya uh, in terms of uh, I don't want to use the word dole because in a country uh, like India we cannot call it dole I would rather call it welfare economics what we are seeing is kind of developing benefits right down to the level of the ground for the first no, no. time in our subsidies country. is dole yes okay let's not confuse ourselves okay uh, even giving away the free food would qualify as, as a form of a dole. Okay? Uh, that is not continuing the, by yeah, the way. Not one these year. other schemes. Two lakh crores has been put aside for that. We'll come yes. back to that in just a bit. Uh. Finish your thought. So, the thing is, you see, so I think one of the main concerns that many economists had pre budget was that is it going to be an election oriented budget? Or are they going to? So is continue? is this populism? Have we seen? Have we seen? Does it sound like? Does it smack and smell of populism to you? Uh, a, a little bit in perhaps the food scheme, but at the same time, I would say you know where does dole end and where does welfareism begin? You okay, know, I, okay. I think it, it, it didn't smell like that to me at all. In fact, it, in fact, had you not had we not just mentioned it, none of us are talking about it. That oh my God, what a populist budget! No, no, it is not a populist budget at all. Yeah, it is not a populist, a populist budget by definition, ladies and gentlemen, would dump the fiscal deficit. Okay, come out with insane subsidies and gifts for everyone okay yeah. and what uh, narendra modi recently called in the, in, in gujarat politics revdi revdi means free water for you mm -hmm. free electricity all your loans are 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 cancelled okay in fact we'll be cancelling your loans and giving you fresh loans on all matters none of those issues have come i'm genuinely surprised at least some of them should have come the only thing which is a literal dole is as basic as feeding people feeding people. okay mm -hmm which you can't really be critical of you can say okay maybe we didn't for the pandemic it was 100 percent required uh, maybe it wasn't required but they're stretching until election so you can say okay maybe they're pushing it a little bit okay but otherwise uh, she said i'm meeting my fiscal revenue targets in fact i'm i'm tightening my belt yes. for next year okay which and she's already talking about 2025 she's pretty confident that uh, they're going to be back in, in in a year and a half so very interesting ankit has this smacked of a populist budget to you no this is this is not at all the populist budget but it, they have try to put some uh, portion of it which is actually due for long in terms of middle class and other things but overall it, it, it's, it's a great budget I'm repeating myself uh, they have touched the middle class they have touched the lower uh, guys they have touched almost all the industry the tourism uh, industry the pharma ease of uh, doing business they have focused on 
compliance is uh, is expected to go also from a tax perspective also the other compliance like pan is a common link unified uh, unified filing schemes e courts digi locker so it's 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 a, it's it but is again, not we a laugh all of these things now because we want to be told that the corporate tax has been cut by 10% okay because we want a massive headline we laugh at all these things but how if you are doing an electronic video kyc okay how much that changes if you ask me yes. to open a particular financial service okay and i have people who have worked in the banking sector sitting next to me okay and you told me here is your 14 page form okay which you need to sign 17 times put your photograph and then sign across the or sign across the photograph mm -hmm. okay uh unless somebody is filling that form for me i have no idea what i'm filling i am i i am walking away okay today Three minutes later, sir, somebody calls you from a call center. Please show me your PAN card. Okay, seen done. Show me your Aadhaar card. OTP done. Cut, 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 cut. Done. Okay. Right. It changes the scope of things for both the people providing the service and receiving the service. Okay, and and that's and and that's not a joke, Anshuman Joshi. Ji, so what has basically happened is this that you know technology has basically you know helped everybody, whether the banking institutions, non-banking finance companies, or the individuals opening accounts. or maybe doing digital lending and in everything i personally feel it has really brought down the burden of all the banking uh, institutions because now the way is digital now it's no more traditional ways that you open 100 branches and reach out to people now it's on the internet you know you reach out to everybody and it's easier for everybody to simply go and do a kyc even as somebody who is not even educated for example simply could go ahead and show their id in you know in their hand and you know it's very simple it's it's tremendously brought down the okay so when when the finance minister in a budget speech you know which is supposed to be this focus of you know millions of people are watching this and she's talking about digi locker okay and most people right. don't know what the heck digi locker is should they tomorrow learn digi locker well digi locker uh, saves everybody's time all your documents are pretty much there so let's say technically should be there okay yes I mean, it's there. there so okay. let's say you have I a have driver's mine, license but not all my documents are right so there. so let's say you have a driver's license yeah. you're not carrying it with you it's very easy you can simply go ahead and pull out a driver's license from the digi locker you have a passport you can you can pull it out not necessary you may always carry your documents with you and that's the best way because it's something which is encrypted and it's something which which can be verified by the government agencies okay. or the partnership okay so banks. i i want you i, I would like yeah go ahead go ahead mr yeah, puri i would like to pitch in on this uh, rishab basically it's a digi locker is one of the revolution which indian india uh, indian tech industry has introduced or the indian government has introduced because uh, it has basically unified all your documents i have been personally using from from a very very long time Same and here. i will also add one more uh, such kind of a utility which is digi yatra i don't know how many of them have used it i have been using please, it please please educate us i don't yeah, have no idea I, i have been using it's it from inception in trust airport, me it's huh? a revolution nobody in the world has actually done such kind of thing it is going to reduce your time for travel you just have to upload your boarding pass onto the digi yatra app and you just yeah. walk through you just zip through the yeah. all your all the gates security yeah, checks and yeah and i i i i from dubai airport not even immigration is can your password walk off yourself okay so things are things are things are changing we're heading in the right direction uh, but these things start mattering okay which is the job of government which is to make your life easier and let you do what do you need to do to to facilitate the economy okay uh, i'm going to have to take a very short break at at some point of time uh, we're going to come back and discuss direct taxes in detail between 2 to 3 o'clock so if you if you waiting for tune on that the details are on your screens it is some savings to you it's not going to change your life it's going to make your life a bit easier so it's a nod to you okay it's the government is given a 37000 crore rupee nod salute salam and a thank you for your many years of patience to the middle class which i think was was well deserved okay now let us look at the cliched larger picture which forgive me i am a tv journalist i have to do it okay are we on the road joyta basu to be a 5 trillion dollar economy we are 3.22 we are going to be growing at about 6.5 to 7 okay so by this time this year next year we'll be at 3.44 trillion dollars 5 trillion dollars how do we get there joyta basu uh well uh, obviously one way will be you know i mean our digital uh, india in terms of i think that is one way of course we have to think in terms of manufacturing and uh, whether this budget is going to give enough push to manufacturing or not but i think it will it is not that it is not you know msmes startups and all these things i think will go a long way in helping us to um, Uh, to achieve that target and i think in terms of achieving that target i would say 
maybe yeah on, honestly if you're looking in the budget speech for details on this you're not going to find them you will find them in the budget documents hmm. but i'll take you through the headline figures when what is what is when we are saying that we are spending nine times more on railways yes than we did in 2013 okay 9x not 9% more nine right. times more okay hmm. now i just want you to imagine in the back of your mind and again i take your nimbu mirch fingers you know puri nazar okay put all those aside I just want you to imagine the back of your mind. Have the frequency of devastating rail accidents in this country reduced? I okay? think it. Uh, and I can tell you anecdotally, as a TV journalist, that it would happen a few times a year for sure. Okay. Hmm. And again, fingers crossed. No news is good news. Okay. Hmm. I just took a train from Ludhiana to Delhi. In three and a half hours, it takes me seven hours to drive. The train was traveling at 130, and this was a Shatabdi, not even a Vande Bharat. It travels 150. I can't drive a car at 130 constantly for three hours. Mm. It's not possible. My that was the first train journey I've taken in 15 years. Because why would anybody travel by by Indian Rail? Either you fly or you drive. If it's short enough, you drive. If it's long enough, you fly. Okay, it's changed my perspective completely. That you can have high speed rail. and because my memory of high speed rail as a, as a as a child was khatak 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 until i went to england and i realized that they have joint rails there is no khatak 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 and it doesn't happen now here in india these are fundamental changes that start taking place uh, let me get mr puri back in mr puri uh, in terms of themology because when we say we are doing 2 lakh crores in rail and 7 to 10 lakh crores in infrastructure you know at 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 a larger level This means the roads. That's the Delhi Meerut Highway, the RRTS, mm-hmm. your metro, which you know, which your your friends and family are going to take. This has to translate somewhere. Is it translating in the right places? So yeah, Rishabh, see, uh, basically the in amount of infrastructure investment which the government is doing, and all uh, all credit to the um, uh, Ministry of Road and Infrastructure, where they have intensive intensive investment they have done, and they with the timelines. I think we are we are already on the way to to have a very very robust uh, uh, development of the infrastructure because that is the that is the uh, backbone of the entire growth of the country. If we do not have a good infrastructure, which we have been lacking for so many years, the the industry is not in a position to flourish. So I think the, we are we are absolutely on okay. the right track. Okay, okay, that yeah. is job of coach and captain. Okay, yeah. if you are mm. coach of the Indian cricket team, you want to make sure the boys get the best training, the best fitness absolutely. equipment. Uh, that they can they can get the best stadiums uh, the you know if you have a hot shower if you pull a limb you get best this is what the job of a coach and captain should be and government and prime minister just need to be coach and captain that's their job okay vinita agarwal uh, md of the transport corporation of india limited joining us on the broadcast uh, right at the right time vinita agarwal ji uh, we were being told and many of us had the apprehension that one year before an election this would be a populist budget mm. has it come across to be a pragmatic one to you sir uh yes i certainly agree that it is a more pragmatic budget than a than a populist one uh clearly because this is one of the uh, uh reasons is that the amount of expenditure that the government is looking to do capex versus opex i think that clearly ensures that uh, we are going to be on a growth path even after the budget uh, after the elections okay uh when we say on the growth part what have you seen sir because everything can't be covered in a budget speech the devil is in the detail you probably had a little bit of a chance not too much to just glance through the detail that especially affects you uh in 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 transportation in logistics uh is the sheer scale of the infrastructure boom in india railways roadways ferryways is it making life more cost efficient for you and therefore your customer and end user absolutely i think uh, as you know that last year the government also announced the national logistics policy and uh, one of the tenets of the national logistics policy is to increase multimodal transport multimodal transport would mean that less uh, dependence on road but more on other forms like rail on sea inland waterways and so on and as and more as and more and more infrastructure gets created in the country and uh, at the outlay this year is 10 lakh crores Will certainly help the sector to reduce the cost. But when we say infrastructure, what does it really mean, sir? You know, it becomes cost. very, it becomes very ephemeral, amorphous. Can we say? Can you and I look each other in the eye and say, you know, 
next time we go on a holiday from delhi to agra forget the highway we can take a boat from delhi to agra agra down the yamuna which we have never been able to do in our lifetimes are, are we seeing those realities come to fruition sir Uh, absolutely i think you have to also look at not uh, from a passenger perspective but also from a cargo perspective yes because uh, we are moving cargo across the country and we are seeing that things have improved substantially uh, so i think we have to be very optimistic to see that there are lots of changes happening and those changes don't have to be only at the hard infrastructure level but also the soft infrastructure uh, so soft infrastructure is the digitization the documentation all of that has also come down substantially okay when we say it's come down substantially in terms of metrics how do you guys make a judgment call on whether your life has become easier is it all about economies of scale is it is it about waiting for cheaper fuel is it about cheaper tolls less time spent in toll booths less time spent from transporting one from one place to the other regardless of the mode of transport how do you guys improve your efficiencies which are all infrastructure related yes absolutely so we are looking at from the time the cargo is uh, originates to where it gets to um, and all the time it takes in between so we did a study in 2008 Where we found that the average speed of a truck in India is about 23 kilometers per hour. This has substantially gone up. It has more than doubled. Uh, it might seem less still, but it's the overall infrastructure we have to see, overall things that are happening. Uh, so net, net, I think it's been uh, very beneficial in the last, uh, I would say, four five years. Okay, practical things like you know your your these fast tag cards. Okay, better highways. Uh, uh, how much are they actually impacting your your your, your business sir uh, about 7 8 years ago we did a study with i am calcutta we we found out that uh, trucks were wasting 88000 crores just standing on the toll booths trying to pay the cash um, and that itself is a huge saving today when trucks are going through the using fast tags Yeah, e-way bill having e-way bill today means that you don't have to stop at check posts around the borders. Um, using container transport means that you can move cargo from road to rail to sea seamlessly. So all of these things are making a big difference. Okay, well, heading in the right direction uh, uh, is 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 the terminology, ladies and gentlemen. If you were looking for uh, some big announcement in the budget, uh, well. unless you are very very deeply interested in certain sectors there isn't any other than the fact that the tax laps have improved and that's exactly how a prudent budget should be okay it should not be about big announcements it should be about getting the details right because the big announcements i promise you are the easy one i will come and give everybody double gdp okay fine but how the devil is always uh, in the how now we've been having a conversation uh, i promised you we'll come back to tax labs uh, very very shortly if that's what you're interested in we'll spend a full one hour dedicated to that let me come back to ankit on this ankit now let's move away from the infrastructure part part mm -hmm. we've discussed r and d we've discussed infrastructure we've discussed the the direct tax labs uh let's look at the state of the economy for a second okay uh physical budget estimates are okay GDP growth estimates are okay. Uh, inflation estimates, as per yesterday's economic survey, okay. are all okay. Yes. Do you see any strategic risks? Because right now we seem to be doing just fine compared to what's happening around us and the rest of the rest of the world. So the only strategic risk I look at it uh, with the recession coming globally. So our if this recession would not have been, then we would have been growing at the double digit. we would have been crossing 10% for sure that i strongly believe in but because uh, of the recession hitting all over the world we have gone down to 7% this year and expected to be around 6 6 and a half next year and if that hit continues globally uh for this in the next 3 or 4 quarters so that is the only challenge i see okay. that the growth rate might further shrink okay growth rate might might further shrink but uh, anshuman joshi to the best of your best guesstimate Are we still running a recessionary risk? We've had it, of course, during pandemic, 
but in, in is india because india seems to be in a different orbit to where what the rest of the world is doing what's what's going on no i think we are definitely not uh, having that risk at all you know so i think uh, the world if you look at you know they they're basically uh, you know going literally through that situation right now Com coming to india india is still doing fine india is still doing better and i think this budget is fabulous budget for i think uh, making things grow you also mentioned earlier that you know uh, how would eventually this really work out how would but, but we I, have I, a five million, are you seeing five some some, some st because our stock markets yeah. were completely not too long ago dependent on money of fiis that's it right they they chose when the market went up and they chose when the market went down the fiis right. have been consistently pulling out money for the past 1 1 and a half years because their economies have been in trouble interest right. rates have gone up so it's you know it's, it's better for them to you know uh, take money back home right our market is still at record highs there seems to be something structurally different there well uh, i i personally feel i personally feel if you if you've noticed that there have been several legislative changes in the fair of fame act also so a lot of even the indian companies indian businesses are going global trying to make uh, their indian companies more stronger which is eventually also going to be penetrating a lot of growth because if you look at the history look at majority of these american companies they've gone global to be successful no absolutely so, right you know so if if they if there can be a mcdonalds in india there should be in haldirams in new york as well i right. understand the concept but at the point i'm trying to make mr mr puri jump in on this okay yeah. now some <laughs> indians who Sorry. have the wherewithal okay would be interest investing in us stocks okay some chinese would be investing in us stocks but if we were to pull out all our institutional money okay whether it comes from 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 private from funds or, or from uh, from other larger institutional we won't be able to tank the us stock market okay the reverse was true okay but the fiis have been net pulling out money and the stock market is still doing well so there seems to be some domestic structural change going on which we haven't seen ever before something is different and this is despite the fact that they you know people have been trying to short adani for the past few weeks uh, successfully unsuccessfully of course is a, is an open argument so the market is still holding up yeah so see basically it's a, it's it's a, um, a very well um, uh, stated that basically the entire investment which is coming in from the from the fiis into india they are they behave more like opportunistic in this situation yeah. so it's it's more you know whenever they they see that there are any kind of down streams coming in they are the first one to run away from the situation mm. and uh, whenever they see that okay there is something positive in then they they pump in the money back into india so coming back to the situation where we as indians can have this kind of liberty in in an in international market i don't see that as a uh, as a ni in the near okay, future okay so yeah. i I've, i've got nothing to cry about today i'm not panicking about inflation it's it's okay uh gdp growth could be slightly better i mean we need to be beyond 8% really to make it to 5 trillion in a reasonable point point of time uh there is a global but you're growing fastest in the world so you know can't complain there our fiscal deficit can't find an issue with it uh what do i find an issue with if i really wanted to find an issue okay Uh, I'm not going to say if I was advising a certain political party, but if I wanted to find an issue with the budget, where would I find Jyotir Basu? Uh, well, I I think you know when you're talking about issue with the budget, I really don't think I'm trying to. I I can find a major issue with the budget as such. Well, so we have to ask the budget saying to find issues. For, for, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will forget it. I mean, I'm certain uh, they will uh, talk about you know. I mean, everything is wrong with the budget. I don't really find it. It's a very prudent budget. It's a very intelligent budget. It's a very forward-looking budget. And at the same time, as we also mentioned, yes, considering the middle class has been cribbing, there okay. is something for them. But you see, one of the reasons why we are here. is because of the i mean the last few years of reforms that have come into the system and not just you know it is the gs to reform the banking sector reforms that they have been they have been trying actively to clean up certain areas yes. so you know as a result of which what we are witnessing touchwood is a much more stable economy and you see it is i mean when we are when the finance minister is talking about realizing potential jata do you remember when we did the con N npa conclave Ladies and gentlemen, can you actually believe that a television channel like ours did an investigation into non-performing yes. assets that resulted in a in an annual conclave that we had a summit on it? It was such a big deal four years ago, okay? And most of these assets have been written down, accounted off now, and the public sector banks in the past few months have actually started turning profits. Yes. Okay. Uh, I can't tell you what that. I can't explain to you. Public sector bank running profits after all all the crony capitalist loans they've been giving. So okay, Jaita. Okay, stick your neck out. Populist or pragmatic? I think it's pragmatic. Okay, Ankit. Pop populist or pragmatic? Definitely pragmatic. 
And if you, if, as you were asking about what are the negatives of the budget, I'm sure. Uh, no, 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 okay, I'll come back. We're doing a rapid fire. Atul, Atul Puri, for sure, or pragmatic? For sure, pragmatic. Anshuman Joshi. Pragmatic. Okay, pragmatic. So four out of four people think it's pragmatic. I didn't see any populism in it because I told you the root cause of definition of populism would be fiscal responsibility, FRBM, in the dustbin, fiscal deficit, nobody cares. Cut, 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 subsidy, 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 free electricity, free pani, free bijli, free everything. <laughs> None of that has, in a sense, happened. A populist budget does not come and tell you about AI and 5G and innovation. That's not what a populist budget is going to do because uh, 500 million people ain't going to get money in their bank because of some AI miracle that's going to happen, uh, no matter what chat GPT does, okay? So there's a, there, there's, a, there's a reality check in this. The second themology I want to, want, to, want, want, to, want to cover, and let me go back to it. Ankit, are we doing okay? Are we in trouble or are we doing actually pretty well i think we are we are we are doing okay but there's always an improvement area which will be which we all will keep focusing okay so we are, we are doing okay but can be better yes okay anshuman are we doing okay are we doing pretty decently or no, are we we're doing we're doing decent and i'm sure we're going to progress we're going to okay. progress decent sure. and 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 go better joyata basu yeah. is the country making giving you the feeling that we are doing decently okay or are you think we're doing yeah we're just carrying on or are we doing you know are we in trouble well, when I see in the global context, I mean, we are more than decent. We are better than decent. And yes, we are moving towards much better. Uh, I, I, I would say we are getting going towards better. Mr. Puri, okay, decent, not so, so well, uh, trouble. See, we, I will just add one thing to it that we have, we should not forget the fact that we are now the, one of the world's largest consumer population. Mm -hmm. So that is what actually adds to the strength. And uh, if, we, if we have to breach the 7% or 6.8% GDP, then what is imperative over here is that we need to increase the consumption base. So in all, to sum up whether it is decent, I think we are absolutely in the right direction. Okay. It's a very decent budget. Okay, very decent, nothing earth shattering. Okay, it's not smacking of, of, of the ravedies, okay? Uh, so that's a, not a bad uh, 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 estimate to go away from. I promise you, uh, what I was used to be listing is, uh, railway budget has been done with it, but it would be, we're announcing 500 new trains. Okay, and everybody's going, wow, amazing, amazing. We're canceling all your loans. Wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. None of that has happened, okay? The devil is, of course, always in the detail. With that, let me uh, bring in Chirag Bajal. He's a uh, managing director of Carrier, uh, joining us on the broadcast. Mr. Bajal, appreciate your time with us. So your, your, your guesstimation, so let me take the overall picture before I ask, ask you for you know, the specificities. Did it sound like or smack of populism or did it sound like a pragmatic forward-looking budget? Well, I think it's clearly pragmatic and a realistic one at that. So, so, rea so realistic. Are we as a country, sir, from what you've heard yesterday, from what you yourself are experiencing in terms of your business environment, uh, from what you've heard today, given that the global environment is a bit tricky right now, both inflation, economy, countries around us are in trouble, are we doing okay? Are we in trouble or are we actually doing pretty decently? I think we are doing reasonably well and uh, if you also look at it from another perspective, let me just turn this around and tell you, it's called meet the moment because if we are doing better versus others, it's also possibly the time for us to maybe play a little more offensive which is what we are trying to do with capital expenditure going up and while public expenditure was uh, increasingly better in the last three to four years, private capital expenditure is now likely to catch up. So I would, I would be more inclined towards saying that if supply chain-led uh, inflation can be you know, brought under control, which is where domestic manufacturing uh, really helps, that is only going to add much uh, shot in the arm, much more power, power to us. Okay. Is, is there more, I won't say emphatically so, but is there more ease of doing business? Because government really makes a themology that we have cut away these 30,000 in compliances, we are doing away with the you know, criminalization of all sorts of offenses, we are making it easier for people like you to function. Are you finding it easier to function, even if it's marginally right now? It's marginal, but it's in the right direction. And this has to really accelerate, because when you look at uh, multinational companies who would like to do business in the country, they would really want more of digital-led compliance as well, which kind of is black and white. 
you take people out of the entire process and it's more speed outside of just ease of doing business. So it's a mix of both. But we've got to do more on that and more on that quicker. Okay, Mr. Bajal, what, you know, when we generally sit and discuss budgets and, you know, it's, and it comes down to big companies, 0.25% uh, here or 0.5% here can matter. But, you know, then, then that becomes a, a, a pecuniary detail. What fundamentally over the next two, three years will make it better for you to do business and manufacture in this country? Do you need better logistics? Do you need better roads, better infrastructure, more reliable power, greener power? What do you need? Okay, so that's a great question because if you were to look at it, the basics of doing business, which is uh, land, labor, capital, this is the holy trinity for any economy and any business. If this were to look at a digital backbone around all three of them, which looks at ease of doing business, compliance being taken care of, and at the same time, we don't have issues around access of access to electricity, water. We don't have issues around labor as much with the hopefully the new codes coming into play and coming into play in a more efficient manner. If the consumption, the private consumption continues to rise the way that it is rising, that is exactly what will lead us to a better earnings and earnings is what gets reinvested back into the country. So we need to have that virtuous cycle where the costs come down of doing business through compliance, all logistics, consumption goes up, we have more capital coming in, the personal purchasing power is going up and that's a kind of a cycle that I'm really seeing which uh, must happen in the next two Okay, last years. question before I let you go sir, you know the, the other part of the translation headache or, or quagmire is between what the government at the center hopes, aspires, wishes and wants to do versus the translation once it filters through the states, especially uh, if, if the states are you know, not politically aligned. Uh, how is that translation matrix becoming better, if at all, sir? Now, that's Hello. the biggest question or a tricky one at that for any government in a uh, constitution the way that we are. Some of the ways I'm seeing that might work is if there is an extra allocation to the state governments that is being announced as support with interest-free loans and that is tied to the state's capital expenditure, I think that's a brilliant move. Mm. If we are able to do more, let's say, on power reforms and take some of the leakages out that the states are currently suffering with, which is also where the focus is, uh, more cohesive work is the only way to make a democracy work. And whether it's politically aligned or not, I think somewhere we will also look at that maturity coming into our country where we rise above that. I see some uh, offshoots, some green shoots of that. So I'm really hoping, I'm hopeful on that. Okay. Uh, your hope, sir, uh, my hope is that uh, government builds us the infrastructure and then gets out of the way while the pe people like you come and build, build the economy. What's, what's your best yeah. hope? My hope is uh, like yours because I believe that we are proud Indians and we are very enterprising. We need good quality infrastructure and as much as possible good governance versus the command and control over everything. So more checks and balances, more of digital, make sure that that impacts the cor that corruption automatically. Okay. And uh, that's the that's the way up why I'm more hopeful. Okay, Chirag Bajal, appreciate your time. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, for joining us on the broadcast. Kirti Shah is joining us on the on the broadcast as well. He's a he's a diamond tier, uh, and uh, Kirti Shah, I don't know whether you're going to be thrilled uh, or slightly worried that we are now going to be making lab made uh, lab grown diamonds. Is it a massive opportunity or is it a is it a massive systemic risk for the diamond trade? Please, uh, Hindi, Hindi, please. Yes, Kirti Shah Ji, what are you happy that you are lab grown diamonds? Kar rahe ya, thoda ye, is, is it a risk to your business, sir? Look, the lead diamond is a lead diamond. Lead diamond is a lead diamond. But I think that nature diamond is a nature diamond. The lead diamond is not a lead diamond. Okay, so why are you doing it in the industry? विश्व में तो बन रहे हैं अभी ये इंडस्ट्री चारू होगी हो रही है इसमें हम विश्व के गुरु नंबर वन लीडर कैसे बने इसमें नहीं ये क्या है आज जिस तरह रब रब नेचर दब का जो प्राइस बढ़ी जिस तरह और जिस तरह लोगों ने तीन साल चाल में जो नेचर डायमंड लॉस किया है 
तो उनके बाद जो लेफ्ट ऑन डायमंड में लोगों को एक एक बैकअप मिल गया कि थोड़ा थोड़ा काम करके लोग वापस आ गए आज एक 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 मार्केट लेफ्ट डाउन का भी खड़ा हो गया है डीजल के साथ लेफ्ट डाउन का भी खड़ा हो गया है इसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है लेफ्ट डाउन भी होना चाहिए और नेचल भी होना चाहिए इसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है ओके लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वी डोंट प्ले फुटबॉल वेरी वेल बट वी प्ले क्रिकेट रियली रियली वेल ओके इफ समबडी कम्स अप विथ टी ट्वेंटी यू बेटर प्ले टी ट्वेंटी वेरी वेल ऑल्सो अदरवाइज यू लूज यू लूज योर डोमिनेंस ओवर क्रिकेट डायमंड इज एन इंडस्ट्री ऑफ विच नाइन्टी फाइव नाइन्टी परसेंट प्रोसेसिंग टेक्स प्लेस इन दिस कंट्री इफ यू आर नॉट टेकन अ डिसीजन ऑन दीज लैब ग्रोन डायमंड विच आर अ रियालिटी नाउ बिकॉज दे बिकमिंग कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव दे बेसिकली क्रिएट हाई टेम्परेचर एंड प्रेशर इन अ लैब अर्ल इट वॉज इम्पॉसिबल टू डू अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू नाउ इज वेरी ईजी एंड इफेक्टिव टू डू इज बिकमिंग चीपर एंड चीपर द लैब ग्रोन डायमंड आर केमिकली आइडेंटिकल टू नेचुरल डायमंड ओके देर इज नो डिफरेंस इन प्रॉपर्टीज people who do the mining will tell you that the natural are better but they exactly the same okay is is discussing one water versus the other water the chemical composition is the same whether you value natural diamonds more because they've been you know furnished in the depths of the earth versus in somebody's backyard is a separate conversation which will go on but for us to dominate or continue our domination of the diamond trade we cannot be subverted by new technologies emerging elsewhere right call surat and others need to remain the diamond capitals whether it's lab grown or natural either way it should be everything should be in india uh, i would say that we should sell them in india also they right now they get traded in amsterdam but polished in india let's let's stay, change that business around also kithi ja just stay with me for a second let me get jata basu uh, back in this conversation jata i'm going to i'm going to take a quick quick summation since you're my one person who i know prefers to have the political conversation <laughs> than the econ- economic one okay uh this budget and i know it's not narendra modi speaking this budget almost sounded like a very relaxed and confident government pretty yeah. sure about what it's doing not yes. showing any sorts of you know flip flopping schizophrenia i'm not saying flip flopping doesn't happen i mean farm laws were recalled so it can happen to any government okay under pressure of of elections so it didn't sound populist we've lost the plot we are panicking it seemed like confident sure we're doing the right things the right way let's keep let's crack on boys kind of kind of kind of logic did you get the same impression yes absolutely rishab uh, because you know especially i am uh, again i'm going to put it in the context of the turmoil that is going on in the rest of the world i mean look at this you know how kind of our ship of uh, um, state has been in spite of that kind of the seas are very uh, they're rumbling i think we have been doing touch wood again i'm going to say pretty well you just know, often times you know been, uh, budgets and, and the politics this is a reflection of that yeah, and the politics are surround the budget you know generally about giving explanations and excuses for kyun lud gaye barbad ho gaye you because the oil prices yeah. because the war in ukraine okay because of the global pandemic none the nothing exactly and you know there is there is no reflection of this this kind of you know supply chain disruption that is taking place while you know the very focus that we are giving i mean the enhancing focus on infrastructure that is creating that is going to help us in terms of building and maintaining supply chain inside the country okay. and of course okay. outside okay. as well okay last question on this themology and i have one more thing to ask before i before i take a break if you are the bharatiya janata party okay forget you are you are narendra modi how do you as narendra modi take this and make it your campaign speech tomorrow okay what how do you translate it is it going to be about the toilets is it going to be about the about the insurance what here are the takeaways that you you say i did this for you which people will remember you did well uh, uh, since it is politics definitely there will be talk about the food scheme that is going on for uh, okay, that has the food been scheme is the number one political thing yes, okay that's the no that's the 800 million it. people yeah okay uh, house building what we talked about okay, pradhan mantri number 2 Mantri, number 2 huh? and number 2 infrastructure because you see you saw the kind of reaction that was there from the mps because they know that is something that is going to have a direct impact on the lives of their voters so that is another area that is going to be very very important and of course uh, when we are talking about you know areas as we mentioned about the adivasi uh, development and uh, these the, these are okay, so, all so a big a big push to to tribal voters i yes. mean that's done the president of india yes. is, a, is, a, is is a, is a tribal lady so the tribes northeast 
agriculture uh, also uh, i would uh, say to farmers farmers of everybody has been talking about yes. farmers and and doing pressure little about them for 70 years but farmers they always talk about but i, I the differences as or northeast for sure elections are coming up there as we speak in a couple of months or so northeast specifically mentioned and i think uh, he announced 7000 crore just a, a month ago uh, in in meghalaya yes. for meghalaya tripura okay so 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 and big push also, there and also rishabh we have to see how this green and uh, this environment and this push towards green energy how that they can kind of uh, transfer into whether that that's into that a political okay. uh, vote winner or not i don't know whether it tra that translates into but the the 800 million free food uh, for sure is a big ticket i think yes. the toilets are a big ticket the houses for sure are big ticket direct cash subsidy uh, tra transfer big big ticket the emotive issues of ram mandir and all will obviously come later sugar we will come later sugar cooperatives tribal northeast we've also identified a few p political areas was this joyta basu uh, uh, a hindu nationalist fundamentalist budget <laughs> i really don't know what that term means, i don't know it also frankly. but i i will be told by bbc and al jazeera tomorrow that it was so i'm trying to figure out what in this was hindu nationalist fundamentalist i think it's time we stopped looking at bbc and al jazeera and let them stew in their own juice they have been exposed to be completely discredited i think you know if we are confident as a nation and this is a confident budget you know we might as well be confident of what we are doing and start no, no I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident, but I think we should give it back also. Uh, simple confidence is not good enough. Kabi, kabi. No, no we know. have been. I mean, a every time Gandhianism doesn't work. No, they come and slap you, turn the other cheek. Sometimes you've no, got to no, give it back to them also. Cheek. You have to sometimes ignore. No, no, I'd be more them. than happy to happy, happy to give it. I have a lot of former colleagues who work for the BBC. I, I don't know why they're still working there. I would have quit, quit by now out of sheer uh, sheer sheer idiocy that's been going on. Okay, so it's not a Hindu nationalist uh, fundamentalist budget. Okay, then was it an Islamophobic budget? Are the Muslims in India all going to die tomorrow because of this budget? Jaita. Well, considering all the schemes that have been announced, everything not once any particular religion has been mentioned. And as I said, mentioned earlier also, since the movement is from uh, identity politics to development politics, so uh, after all, a six-lane highway is used by as much a Muslim as by a Hindu or by a Christian. It's the same with the Prime Minister's Avas Yojana. So, I mean, where is the okay. scope of Does any Narendra Islamophobia Modi here? Does Narendra Modi actually believe it? in his heart and soul when he says sabka saath sabka vikas sabka prayas sabka vishwas or is it just a slogan i don't think it is just a slogan i think this is something he has been i mean assiduously working towards right from 2014 and if we are confident now it is it's a result okay. it's because okay. of that okay i want to address one more point then you take a break uh, i think uh, Dr. Sudhil Kalhan is also joining us on the broadcast. Dr. Sudhil, we'll just come to you in just a, just a minute, sir. I just want to go across uh, the, the table one last time. So, Ankit, what we were discussing earlier in the before the budget speech, across the northern part of the Himalayas lies the second largest economy in the world, which we aspire to be. That economy, politically, economically, domestically, is in turbulence, as in it is, it is most amount of trouble than I've seen it in my lifetime. Okay, is India emerging? as the alternative not just in talk but in reality definitely yes and as you said it is not hindu nationalist or extremist it is actually a nationalist budget which is focusing on the development of people as a whole their quality of life has to go up the economy has to grow the social strata of every sect of people has to grow up so i have no doubts that we are not uh, going to yeah, actually I've, chase I've China because, because I, I didn't hear somebody says you know what seventy thousand crores to build only temples in this country. Wah, 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 thali, 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 thali. Okay, okay. No money for AI and R and D. Uh, that's not what happened in the budget, guys. The opposite of that happened. Okay, so whatever Al Jazeera and BBC are smoking up, uh, they can they can figure away. And with Indians who work with them, who cook up these things for them. Uh, by the way, I'll save that frustration for a later telecast. Uh, Anshuman, okay. Uh, China is in the most amount of trouble than we've ever seen probably in a lifetime, okay? yeah. at least in the past two, three decades. Uh, are we emerging as the obvious alternative? Are we getting the things right fast enough? We are. We are with the Make in India program and uh, especially looking at uh, several manufacturing uh, you know, industry sectors, everybody is setting up and it's been happening over the years if you see, slowly, steadily coming to the mobile phones. Majority of the mobile phone manufacturing is now happening here. Look at the automobiles. Majority of the automobiles are manuf getting manufactured here. Even the foreign companies, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, 
all of them are doing it here. Yeah. So eventually, I think, yes, it is emerging as a major alternative to China. Okay. And okay. yes, okay. it's okay. also so getting... Yes, Atul Puri, uh, alternative to China. Quickly, sir. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, India is definitely an alternative to China and that's what we have been proving time and again. Okay. Considering the considering the turmoils which are there in the neighboring country, uh, the, the, the robust investment on which we are sitting right now and the robust uh, uh, the, the the tax kitty okay. which is coming so, in so, so is, yes. is something which is I don't helping. have to compare us to Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. No, we are, no, we are, no, there's nowhere we, in the we, 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 we can cross, we cross that line. Uh, uh, the Pakistani GDP is 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 10% of ours. Okay. <laughs> so all the, the best to Bilawal and and Bajwa. Bilawal will be in town uh, shortly for the G20. Some sorry some it's, SU, it's SU SU meeting. SU. Some of the unicorns have uh, much more uh, values as compared to the GDP of the neighboring country. Without <laughs> yeah, going well, into the details. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. So okay. Uh, I'm expecting the Prime Minister to be speaking very shortly. He's going to make a very short address, which is going to be televised on his commentary on what he felt was uh, his budget priorities. And remember, the budget is his budget. Of course, the finance minister reads it. It's his government's budget, for sure. But he's going to give you... And, and what he's going to say will help you identify what he was thinking in terms of his themologies of what, what, what the priority areas were. Before that happens, I need to take a break also. Quick conversation with Dr. Sudhil Kalan. Before that, he's chairman of the Health Council of Asocham. Dr. Sudhil Kalan, your first thoughts on the, on the budget, sir, in the areas that you were tracking? See, uh, first of all, I must congratulate the finance minister for uh, doing a great job. See, the focus, as she started her speech, she said, my focus is going to be on youth, on women empowerment, on farmers, on OBCs, on financially weaker people. So I think that is that thought process that, you know, the youth needs to be skilled, the youth needs to be productive, that the women need to be empowered, I think is the right step in the direct direction. Okay, in the, Secondly, in the, in the specific uh, area, know, the sir, so the nursing institutions, like the pharma research, uh, it, it, it's all incremental, but is it heading in the right direction? You see, the, for example, the uh, announcement of 150 new medical co uh, nursing colleges would help us get more paramedical staff and more nursing staff. You know, all hospitals are short of nursing staff. Because most of the nursing staff, uh, once they get trained, they are exported to Gulf countries and other places. So we need to have more skilled paramedical uh, nurses as well as uh, technicians. Okay, so, so, so that's that's a definitely a step in the right. So direction. a right problem has been identified. Maybe it's not been fixed, but it is being addressed. Uh, yes, they go to they go to the Gulf states, and they, and half a quarter of NHS is running off Indian doctors and nurses, as you well know, sir, uh, and and how it works. Okay. Uh, now, just a generic overview, sir. Did you think that this was a populist electioneering budget or was it a pragmatic budget? You see, I, I, I would not like to categorize this budget either as a pragmatic or a, or a populist budget. I think if you are providing some tax incentives to the, to the people who really deserve it, that doesn't make it a populist budget. I think the the middle income uh, group of our society needed the much relief on the on the on the taxation and i think if they save a little money they are going to use it for the education of their children they are you going to use it for the uh, healthcare needs of their family so i think th that is, is the step in the right direction okay are we doing and okay as a country sir in terms of our economy inflation deficit Export, GDP growth, are we doing okay? And in your own anecdotal experience of running your own company, sir, are we doing okay? Are we doing well or are we in trouble? I, I, I think, I think, I think, no, we are doing better than okay. If you see, we are uh, on the right path of, uh, you know, fiscal prudence also we are controlling, inflation is under control, the country is growing, the demand is growing. So I think we are, we are doing fairly okay. well as okay. a country. Okay, fairly well for a country the size and scale of India. I'll take it at that. And that's the assessment here uh, from the desk. The budget, if you were looking out for, for, for dramatic populism and just a freebie, ravedi spree has not happened. It has almost seemed like a very calm, confident, sorted, point by point. A lot of people would always wish that this could have also been done and that could have also been done. There's a themology here which has definitely emerged. Nothing is ever going to be enough. But we're doing okay. And I think we're probably doing pretty well. Suffice it to say that uh, 
with every month that passes, more confidence builds that our time has finally come. I mean, waiting for all those of us who didn't leave the country, okay. I mean, waiting for this day that, uh, like a good good Punjabi, also have enough relatives in Vilayat, in Canada, in UK, in New Zealand, in Australia, in in the US, who come back and say, "Arey yaar, sadke, arey yaar, garmi, theek hai." For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.